Are you tired of aching joints, chronic migraines, those achy feelings that just don't go away? Well, don't give up. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? I'm introducing the program. Ah, so you're, you're telling people about lifestyle changes that they can make and healthy things? No, 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 don't get carried away with yourself. I've got a much quicker fix than that today. Okay, let me guess, surgery. No, surgery is a lump sum. I'm talking about more consistent, like weekly and monthly installments. Whoa, 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 whoa. We don't talk about drugs on this program. No, we don't talk about drugs on this program, but pharmaceuticals are much better than drugs. Look, this is a health show. This is a health show where we share information with the average everyday person to help them prevent disease and restore health. We don't talk about drugs, you know that. All right, look, I didn't want to have to do this in public, but let's just cut to the chase. I'm making people sick. It's true. People need their drugs. And pharmaceutical companies, they sponsor shows like this. You get what I'm saying? Run the numbers. Numbers, what, what numbers are you talking about? I'm talking about your buyout. It's time for you to go, so you need to name your price. All right, you continue to fantasize about that one. I'm gonna go ahead and roll the program, and we're gonna tell the whole world today about how they can receive health in something other than a pill bottle. You stick around, roll it. We don't talk about drugs. Well, welcome and thank you for joining us here in the studio of From Sickness to Health, where I'm your host and I'm going to stand between sickness and health and help you along and understand these things. And today we have a lively program for you. But I'd like to start out today with a word of prayer and with some scripture because it will lead and guide our discussion. So if you don't mind, we're just going to have a quick word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word and we pray that you will bless it today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, in the Bible, it says in Jeremiah chapter 46 and verse 11, it says, in vain shall you use many medicines. And also in Jeremiah, it says in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 13, there is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up thou hast no healing medicines. Now that's from the King James Version. Today joining us here in the studio is once again our good friend, a very good friend to this program, Dr. Jim Saeed, who is a board certified chiropractor and a naturopathic doctor. And he always comes and shares just wonderful information about the physiology of this body and the physiology of disease and gets into the understanding of these things. And I know that you appreciate that. But today also joining us is someone who has a lot of insight in our topic today. Our topic is going to be about pharmaceuticals, as you've already seen. But she has some insights because she is a former pharmaceutical executive. So she knows the ins and outs and all the things that happen behind the scenes. And with that, I welcome both of you to the program, Dr. Jim Saeed and Lydia Calhoun. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for being with us. So today we're talking about medicine or in some, um, some vernacular and some terminologies, uh, it's big pharma, mm -hmm. yeah? So we're gonna talk about medicine and pharmaceuticals and how this is affecting us. Uh, as we saw in the, the opening there, in the segment, we saw that, that people are taking medications for so many different things, right? Mm -hmm. yes. They are looking for health in a pill or in a bottle. Well, before we jump into the discussion, mm -hmm. and I know you all are ready to go, mm -hmm. <laughs> before we get started, let's take a look at what our friend Sickness has to say right. about this subject. Well, what I've got here is a cocktail of medicine. These pills here, they help you go to sleep. These pills, they help you wake up. 
These will help you go to the bathroom. These will make sure you don't use the bathroom too much. These over here, they're for depression. Because imagine after all that, Americans are depressed. Now these over here, these are my favorite pills. They really don't do anything. The detail is in the fine print. It's kind of like a lie, but isn't. Oh, and these pills over here, they cause side effects. But these pills, oh man, they treat those side effects. And I think one of these pills will help you get back to normal. And oh, well, the blue pill, that's a different episode. And you know, the great thing about it is, all these pills will keep you forever addicted and sick. I love the pharmaceutical industry. Back to you, Rico. Oh boy. Well, that would be really funny if it weren't true, right? Sadly. Very true. Very true. As we get started talking about this subject of pharmaceuticals um, and, and the rate at which people are depending upon um, drugs for their health, I think we should sort of get a sense of how this industry works mm -hmm. in relationship to the doctors who are prescribing. Mm -hmm. And Lydia has a lot of information about this because you've been in that world. So how does it all work? What's the relationship between the doctor and, you know, someone like yourself who used to be a pharmaceutical executive? You know, I think the, the number one issue is gaining the trust of a physician. And it really is a relationship building industry. And so that's actually paramount to anything, getting, uh, winning their trust and letting them know that they can trust you to give them accurate information. Mm -hmm. And then from there, name your price. So when you say gaining their trust, so if they trust the pharma pharmaceutical executive, yes? Yes. Then whatever the pharmaceutical executive is, whatever information is being fed to them, then it is pretty much seen as the truth, it's the gospel. That's true. And then they follow along those lines. So, so what I'm trying to understand here, and I want for our audience to understand, is so is this a relationship that is built on health? Is it built on or based on the drugs being or the, the, these medications being produced, developed, so that you can absolutely have better health, cured of your diseases? Is that what it's about? No. That is not what it's about. What it is about is uh, increasing market share. And in many cases, it's about literally creating a need out of sometimes nothing, um, f depending upon what drug it is that you're talking about. Um, so at the, very, at the very crux of the pharmaceutical industry is greed and money. Mm. Money's driving this. Yes. So, so when the, the exec the pharmaceutical exec would go in, because I've seen this where, you know, sometimes I've been at the doctor's office, and I would see someone come in and uh, just very well, you know, and clearly they had, you know, some things, and they would go off with the doctor, and they share some things, and next thing I knew, they'd, be, they'd have some samples. Is that the relationship? They would come, and then sometimes I, my sister-in-law happens to be a doctor, and, you know, there are lunches that take place. Tell me about this the lunches and the visits to the doctor's office. What is that all about? So in, in some physicians' cases, it's just very difficult to get any time, any concentrated time with them. And doing a luncheon is the best way of actually being somewhat guaranteed of having a portion of undivided attention. Um, that's the purpose of, of doing a luncheon. The, the purpose of the samples um, is either to get a patient kick-started on, on um, medicine before they can get it filled at pharmacy, or some physicians would use pharmaceutical samples to offset the cost of mm -hmm. the, the prescription for the patient. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, so, so I wanna make sure that we understand also um, that we're not bashing uh, drugs, right? I mean, there are some drugs that are, that are needed. In a trauma situation, mm -hmm. they're needed, yes. Painkillers, when you have had some form of surgery, surgery that was absolutely necessary, it's needed. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about when drugs are used for simple lifestyle issues. Mm -hmm. In other words, things that you could change yourself just through changing your lifestyle, what you eat, how you exercise, and so forth. But yet, instead of doing those things that are necessary, you go to a drug. And this is... This is uh, something that is very near and dear to my heart, and I know that it's important to you all too, that 
this is coming and I believe it's hurting more than it's helping. Mm -hmm. And now it is even going to a point where we're seeing that it's, there are drugs that are being prescribed for children mm -hmm. unnecessarily. And I think we have a, a little video that, that really speaks to this. So I want to turn to that and then let's come back and talk about mm -hmm. this because the drug is the statin drug. Mm -hmm. You know some things about that, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look and let's come back and talk about that. Heart disease is the number one cause of death in this country and experts say the battle against it cannot begin too early. In fact, America's pediatricians came out today with a dramatic recommendation. Children as young as two should have their cholesterol tested and if needed, kids as young as eight should start taking cholesterol lowering drugs. We begin tonight with Nancy Cordes. Cholesterol disease used to be associated with adults. Not anymore. Eating healthy is important, right? Pediatric cardiologist Craig Sable says he's seen kids as young as five and six with cholesterol problems. Well, I think the sheer number of children that are overweight, are less active, and have significant elevations of cholesterol has grown exponentially since I've started practicing 13 years ago. And with the evidence mounting that elevated cholesterol at this age can lead to heart disease at this age, the American Academy of Pediatrics is issuing aggressive new guidelines. They say children who are overweight, obese, or have a family history of cholesterol disease should have their cholesterol tested as early as age two and no later than age 10. And for the first time, they recommend treating some children as young as eight with cholesterol-lowering drugs or statins. The old guidelines said statins should be used only as a last resort and only in children ages 10 and up. Can you believe that? Mm. In, in a word, that's unconscionable. Mm. What do you mean? Because what you're, what you're looking at is you're talking about a person that hasn't had, hasn't even begun to live a life and actually create a lifestyle. And they're testing, they're creating a need for putting a child on, on a statin out of thin air. I mean, one of, the, one of the messages we actually talked about, which wasn't even an FDA approved message, was that statins are safe enough to be put in the water. Everybody should be on a statin. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. L let's, let's understand, let's, let's define this a little bit because I think before we can really del delve into that and how egregious that is, what is a statin drug? That's a general classification mm -hmm. of a of a medication, but what is it for, doctor? What is a statin drug for? Let me give you the concept. A statin drug is intended to reduce a particular form of molecule that carries fats. Let me describe what I mean by that. Okay. When is the buzzword cholesterol here? The buzzword is cholesterol, but it's a much bigger issue. Okay. And that's my frustration with the issue of statins and cholesterol, that people don't even understand the issue behind it all. Mm. So let me give you the concept very simply. When we eat fats, yep. cholesterol from animal fats, triglycerides as fatty acids, fat-soluble nutrients, they're all fat-soluble, but they're not water-soluble. They don't dissolve in water. Now the blood is a water medium. The water, it's water in the blood that carries all of this. So the body has to have these fats put into something that can be carried in the water. Okay. So I call these boats. Okay, very good. Okay, and there's five different sizes of these fat carrying boats. LDL cholesterol, LDL stands for lipoproteins, so these low density lipoproteins, a certain kind of boat in size, carries cholesterol and triglycerides and these other fat soluble nutrients. Mm -hmm. That's how the body delivers fats to the tissues. Now here's what happens. Take cholesterol for an example. When the Lord made cholesterol, he made one of the most exquisitely beautiful molecules you can imagine. It's exquisite in its structure, its design, its complexity. You change one tiny part of that molecule and it becomes, say, testosterone. Mm. Another part of it, it becomes estrogen. Another part of it, it becomes cortisol, regulating physiology. Doing different things. Absolutely. But let me understand something. For our audience's sake, HDL is the good cholesterol, and that's the one you're talking about th in this instance, yes? Here's my... Because there are two different, let me just make sure that we understand. There are two types of cholesterol. There's HDL, and usually 
maybe you've heard from your doctor, that's the good one. But then they'll tell you that the LDL, that's the bad one. So when they look at your blood work, they're distinguishing, distinguishing between HDL and LDL. So continue with that okay. as a uh, frame Actually, of reference. Technically, there's four kinds of LDL, four kinds of, par of particles that carry cholesterol. But let's limit it to the two most obvious. Okay. So-called good HDL, high density, and so-called bad LDL, low density. All right. They're both good. We need them both. But here's the problem. LDLs carry the cholesterol and fats out to the tissues. From the liver? From the liver. And HDLs brings it back to the liver for reprocessing. So if you carry more out than you bring back, then you're depositing much more than you should. That's the problem. So here's what actually occurs. The liver manufactures cholesterol. It's not just what you eat, it's also what you manufacture. You carry that out. Mm -hmm. If you're eating a lot of fats, you're carrying a lot of them through the bloodstream to deal with these things. The problem is, in a highly oxygen-rich environment, and the most oxygen-rich blood goes to the heart and to the brain. The blood is moving oxygen through the body at all yes. times. All, you're breathing, you're oxygenating the blood, and the most oxygen-rich blood goes to the heart first and then to the brain. So it oxidizes whatever is in the blood rapidly. When cholesterol is being carried through and in excess, it oxidizes and creates what's called a fatty streak inside the artery. That then begins to oxidize further and starts to damage the arterial wall. Now, that wall is one line thick, one layer thick of cells called endothelial cells. Those cells generate a gas called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide coats the inside of the artery and coats all the blood elements, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, so they move through like Teflon. So nothing sticks. Nothing sticks. That's it. Now when we damage the artery with that fatty streak, or we damage with acid foods like sugars, as an example. White refined sugars. White refined processed sugars, sugars, processed yeah. sugars. Then we start damaging the inside lining, we reduce that nitric oxide, and the blood gets sticky. Ah. Then what happens, you form this fatty streak. White blood cells have to come in, eat that up. They create what's called a foamy pus. Uh -huh. That's technically what it's called. Will inflammation come as a result of that? Now it inflames, so uh -huh. now scar tissue forms. Platelets that cause blood to clot stick. You get salts of calcium and magnesium that stick further, and you form now a plaque, mm -hmm. hardening of the arteries. And as it grows, it creates a thrombus, which can then break off or clot the area, and now you end up with a heart attack or stroke. That's the problem. Now, here's the so issue what are with statins. statins. Okay, go ahead. Here's the issue with statins. LDLs come in five sizes of boats. Three big ones, two small ones. The smallest ones can actually get into the artery wall. Statins clear the big three that don't do the damage. They're just carrying fats. Mm -hmm. The ones that are doing the damage aren't touched by the statins. That's a big issue. That's a very big issue. I want to talk about that one on the other side of our, our fair reporting, oh. quote unquote, because we like to go out and see what people are saying on the streets. Okay. Do they understand this issue? Do they get that uh, using medication for lifestyle issues is the way to go? Do they understand mm. that this is causing more of a problem than solving their problem? So let's join sickness out there. I think he is somewhere out there talking, people, talking to people and asking them what they think about this issue. So let's go to sickness. All right, I'm here with my wonderful friend, Moni. I want to ask you about something that everybody seems to love these days. It's like candy. Pharmaceutical drugs. Mm. Mm, you love them too, don't you? Love them. Are you addicted to them? Yeah. What's your favorite one? Yep. Tegretol is what I need. Do you take any drugs, like legal drugs? I'm, I'm asthmatic, so therefore, you know, Asthma. sometimes I take my albuterol inhaler. I have to be honest with you, I love pharmaceuticals. Mm. I think it's the most amazing business model ever invented. What do you think of pharmaceuticals? You know, there's a time and a place for those. Time and a place. Face it, Americans love their pills. Who are we to tell them no? You? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not me. <laughs> Back to you, Rico. <laughs> oh. 
Well, people do love their drugs, don't they? Yes. Whether they are prescribed from a doctor or whether they're getting something that's over the counter, they enjoy their, uh, their drugs. So we were talking about statin drugs and, and HDL um, cholesterol and LDL cholesterol and how uh, the body basically needs both, but um, what, what's happening is the fat in the diet so this is not something that is just naturally occurring, correct? Correct. This is because of what we're putting in, what it's causing, and it is then damaging the arterial walls, the endothelial walls as you describe them, um, that's causing plaque, this breaks off, and then we either suffer some stroke or heart attack, right? Exactly. And, and so I would imagine that most times people are just walking around with an inflamed situation. And, and the common uh, result of inflammation is some type of scar tissue. Yes. Yes? So statin drugs, this cholesterol-lowering drug, is designed to remove that cholesterol, lower the LDL cholesterol? Correct. But it's not really taking care of the problem as long as you're actually putting the fats and so forth in the body. That's exactly it. In fact, that's the bottom line. As long as we keep putting in high, high density fats or high amounts of fats in our diets, oils, fats of all kinds, French Fried fries. Fried foods, oh, French fries. You got it. Yeah. Now you force the body to have to carry that, and now you're going to increase LDLs just from what you ate. Okay, we, we have a short amount of time, so I need to, we need to <laughs> yeah. kind of bring this together because this is fascinating. So there are other things. So statin drugs to lower cholesterol, that's not just it. There are other drugs. What other things are we talking about here? Well, one of the top selling drugs right now is an antidepressant. An antidepressant? And so for people who are depressed, people yes. are taking drugs instead of doing what? What's the, what's, you know, because we have to understand, people need to understand, what should we be doing instead of taking drugs? Well, we should be exercising, because a lot of times people just want to take some type of weight loss drug, right? Yes. Instead of just walking every day. Exactly. We could be walking, we could be exercising, right? Um, what else are we talking about? We're talking about, well, I, I, I eat a lot of food and then I get heartburn, I get indigestion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get some, some Nexium. type of... Some Nexium or some kind of a, a heartburn regulator, if you will. Okay, so we're going to take some type of drug that's going to actually deal with that when really we caused the problem in the first place. Exactly. You're, you're talking about a, a need of, of addressing lifestyle at its core. And, and really, um, what I saw in the pharmaceutical industry was greatly lacking mm -hmm. in that area, that physicians have such a patient load to see that they don't spend the time, they can't, if they're going to make any money, they don't spend the time educating patients on lifestyle and what's actually causing the disease. Whoa, now, now Lydia, you just said something really important to this program, educating people. I always refer to Dr. Jim as the doctor who educates his patients. He shares, spends time with them. This is very important to our health that we become educated about our health and what is best for us. For example, most people don't know that um, diabetes in most instances, most instances, type two diabetes, mm -hmm is completely reversible. That's right. Is that right? In 30 days. In 30 days. Yeah. Now, how would you reverse diabetes instead of taking the common solution? Um, what would you do? It's a lifestyle thing. What are the things that you could do to reverse diabetes? Here's what we've seen clinically. Plant-based diet. A plant-based diet. What does that mean exactly? Eating that which comes from the ground that's edible. Fruits, vegetables, leafy greens. Would that include nuts and seeds? Nuts and, and seeds in moderation. In moderation, okay. Root foods, vegetables of all kinds. All of your produce. Then. Yes, in fact, research has come out proving that the most efficient way to reverse hardening of the arteries, eat your greens. Eat your greens, okay. What else could you do to um, reverse diabetes? Ex uh, exercise is crucial. Exercise. Exercise also. Daily? Daily Once exercise. A week? No, daily exercise and deep breathing and stretching, maintaining flexibility. In fact, exercise increases HDL cholesterol. What? I think we need to slow down on that one right there. Did uh, you hear that? Exercising increases the good cholesterol. Yes. That's, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. What else? What else? Getting sunlight, converting vitamin D in the body to, to move 
calcium more efficiently and also support the immune system. These are essentials. We take diabetics, we get them exercising regularly, walking, eating properly, and they start to reverse their pathology. So what I just heard was a plant-based diet. So that means taking out the fats out of your food. Basically, whenever you're eating anything that comes from a meat source, you are taking in saturated fats. This is going to increase your bad cholesterol and cause problems in your arterial walls. Then you mentioned sunshine. You mentioned, what about water? What, what part does water, water play? We only have a couple essential. seconds left. But a, it's a cleansing system to the body. Water is essential. Rest? The body's primarily water. Rest, rest essential to recover. So good sleep for recovery. Exactly. Sleep between 10 and 2 cleanses the brain. Between 2 and 6 reduces inflammation from the body from the previous day's stress. We need that 10 to 6 hours, 10 p.m., 6 a.m., to be able to properly heal. You know, I tell you what, it just seems to me, Dr. Saeed and, and, and Lydia, we are going to have to pick this up in another program mm. because we have so much more to talk about, don't we? Amen. True. Amen. There's so much more to talk about on this, on this subject and this issue. Now, to just bring into summary, we are realizing that it is entirely possible for us to restore and recover our health by not drug medication, but through lifestyle changes, water, sunshine, rest. You've been in tune to From Sickness to Health. See you next time. You know, I was in an accident some time ago and the pain was so severe, I tell you, you could not have pried those painkillers out of my mouth. Make no mistake about it, there are times when someone is gonna to have to take a prescription drug for some pain relief or some other health issue, but to take medications unnecessarily for simple lifestyle practices oftentimes will lead to dependency and unnecessary side effects. You know, to take a pill for something as simple as weight loss, when you can do something as simple as change dietary habits, uh, drink more water, and exercise. Change is hard, I know. In fact, I would even say it's a little pricey. But the results are priceless, and you'll feel great. Rico, I agree with you. Change is hard. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did I just hear you correctly? Are you agreeing with me? Now, don't get too excited. Change is so hard that people oh, aren't going to do it. That is extremely pessimistic. Oh, please. Old people without pills is like kids without candy. They love them until the side effects come though. And they make pills for side effects. There you have it. This has been our show today. I'm gonna to end the show with what I always do. And that's with 3 John chapter one and verse two. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. You have heard the word of the Lord today and you've gotten some strong information. Now go be healthy. I'm Rico Hill. And I'm the pill-popping blue guy saying Maranatha and goodbye. got a bill for that little demonstration. $6,000? Where am I gonna get $6,000? What do I do now? <laughs>